This spring, I had a few problems that could have cost me thousands of dollars and numerous hours of labor. Instead, I fixed every single one of those with prints that cost literal pennies on the dollar. Yeah, I realize printers are known for trinkets, knickknacks, and whatchamacallits. How could prints possibly survive the abuse of the automotive world? Well, with the right material choice and some very creative thinking, it is more than possible. Stick around and I'll speed run the best seven functional prints of the last six months with you and show you exactly how much money they saved me while I was building my turbo dune buggy. By the way, I'm Justin and I've been a mechanic for over 15 years and in the 3D printing and CAD space, for over a decade. Saying those numbers makes me realize how old I am, and I'm, I'm not happy with that. But let's get after it anyways. First up, this sub $1 adapter beats a $3,000 rebuild any day. As boost pressure was causing an increased crankcase pressure, and the engine seals days were numbered. So how do we make this adapter? I call this the cheap version. Find your favorite budget calipers, measure the inside of the filler neck, then measure it again. We then measure the filter that will attach and head to CAD. Inside CAD, we use our measurements to get a rough idea of the layout and design our part from that layout. We then hit print. Wait a few minutes, head back out to install and test. And it fits flawlessly. We did measure twice after all. Now, TPU is fun, but how about an aluminum part? That's, that's even cooler, right? Part number two, an intake adapter. So this little adapter saved me at least $500 in custom fab, even though it's the priciest print on today's list coming in at $158 in printed aluminum. To capture the area's geometry, I fired up a quick 3D scan. This is the expensive method. Totally optional though, but it meant zero cardboard templates and almost no prototypes. Inside CAD, I modeled the filter with the caliper method. Sometimes it's just faster for simple objects. I then lofted two cylinders, shelled the wall, and embossed some fun yet informative text. Remember, printed text is free and actually it may be cheaper. You're using less material. However, a mill would charge you by the minute as this is more toolpath. One PLA test print to check fit and we're ready to send off for selective laser centering aluminum magic. If I was ordering this part today, I'd have PCBWay laser print it in aluminum. Their online quote tool spits out live pricing in under a minute, and their metal SLS service delivers the tolerance I need for proper fitment. One account covers it all. 3D prints, CNC billets, even PCBs for your ECU. So every part ships from a single dashboard. Check them out at pcbway.com or hit the link below. And after a short wait, we expect the part to arrive. It does. We polish it to a mirror, bolt it on, and revel in the fact that heat can't touch it and it looks like jewelry. Now, don't think that the build plate limits you. Our next two fixes are big multi-piece masterpieces. Part number three, the center console, right here, this guy. Two parts, this time, the printer saved me hours, not just dollars. A fiberglass shop quoted six to eight hours at $75 an hour. That's roughly 450 bucks, plus supplies for a simple center console. To do this project, I broke the console into two parts to fit on my printer's build plate. I then used PET G with a tongue and groove edge so that the two parts would self-align. So the inside seams, they got a pass with a plastic welder, which is a glorified soldering iron, and then a steel mesh is melted into them to reinforce the seam. We then follow that up with a very thin layer of glazed putty, a quick sand, some filler primer, sand again, seal it, and apply a top coat of Cerakote C-Series. My total bill, it's 90 minutes of my time and 19 bucks versus $450 and dealing with fiberglass. Now, if saving time and money is cool, this next part literally cools hot air. Part number four, ram air duct. In a rear engine car like this, everything behind the deck lid is just cooking all the time. So instead of relocating my charge air cooler forward in the vehicle with hours of TIG work and hundreds of dollars in tubing, I printed a custom ram air duct that sits right above the deck lid and it will force air down and through the intercooler. Same as earlier, a quick handheld scan 
capture the decklet area, and then in CAD, I split the model duck into two ASA shells that were large enough to print on a standard bed. The halves then get plastic welded together, and a veil of fiberglass mesh is added inside for extra support. Follow that up with a quick skim of filler, then a VHT paint. ASA plus VHT paint could care less about 250 degree pre-intercooler temps that can be seen. 60 minutes of labor and $31 is a bargain compared to half a day of welding and $300 in tubing. Up next for your countdown, a sleek solution to monitor the health of my engine. Part number five, the boost gauge. It's right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. Ask any professional, gauges save engines. And turbo engines are so much more fragile. They are one overboost away from the scrap heap. On the flip side, the vacuum portion shows engine health at idle. This buggy's dash though, it was never designed for one. And the universal pod that you can buy, they wouldn't have a chance of fitting the roll cage and the angle would be all sorts of wrong. So I start with a quick handheld scan of the dash curve. Yes, I lean on this scanner a lot, but getting geometry right the first time beats printing five test pieces. Calipers confirm the gauge body is 52 millimeters. I model that in CAD and use forms to create a shape that hugs the scan surface. And then I tilt it 22 degrees towards my line of sight. Now with a print time of three and a half hours at 0.2 layer height, I use ASA blended with carbon fiber. ASA shrugs off the UV rays of the open top car, and the carbon fiber fill hides the layer lines. So I can just bolt it in raw. No need for paint or filler or nonsense. $3.50 in filament and half an hour of CAD, and I get real-time data a $40 pod would have never had a chance of doing. And that data can be the difference between a very clean pole and an unsolicited inspection window in the short block. Not every fix needs scanners and carbon fiber, though. Fix number six costs less than a cup of coffee and keeps my running lights aligned in the summer heat. Number six, light adapters. This one might feel trivial, but it saved me an hour and a 10 buck hardware run, so it's on the list. My new LED driving lights sat far too low on the bumper compared to the previous owner's tall halogens. Easy solution here, add spacers. We start with calipers and a tape measure, and then we measure the bracket to the floor. There is a discrepancy of about four millimeters um, from the left one to the right one and then we head inside to draw it in CAD. We sketch up two rounded rectangles, punch a center hole in them, give them 15 perimeters at 80% infill so they're tough and make one spacer four millimeters taller. Total design time was like five minutes and while the printer chews through that nonsense we can go wire those LEDs in and by the time the last of that solder cools two matte black spacers are cooling on the bed. Total cost was two thirds of a dollar in filament and I didn't spend an hour of my Saturday and five dollars in fuel and five dollars worth of fender washers that wouldn't even match the black bumper. With that small annoyance gone, there was no store run, no sagging lights, and it just goes to prove you don't need some catastrophic over the top problem to justify a custom print. Next up, the grand finale. A fuel injector drill jig that I never even bolted to this thing. Yet, it saved me time and money with machine shop level precision. Number seven in our list. Sometimes the smartest thing to do isn't to print the part. It's to make the tool you need to make that part. And a machine shop wanted 200 bucks to drill and tap this fuel rail. Instead, we can draw the rail in CAD, design a jig with proper spacing, and drop it in exchangeable drill guides. Start small at an eighth of an inch and step up so the bits don't walk and destroy the guides. And we end at a quarter inch NPT pipe tap. Now for the rail ends, they were bigger. And jig number two just slots on the end and lets us muscle a huge, big tapered 3 8 NPT pipe tap. So $11 in leftover PET-G and the spacing came out with 0.1 millimeter tolerance. And the tapered threads, they still tied at 60 PSI. So this precision you usually pay a shop for but I'm using plastic tooling with shop grade results on a DIY budget. And I know I promised seven prints, but stick around as I have some honorable mentions coming up. Now, first up, which of those seven prints would you build first? Just drop the number below or tell me why. Or if not one of those seven, tell me some way you could fix your car with 3D printing. And while you're down there, 
If you haven't already, hit that subscribe so you don't miss next month's build, as I'm trying to do more fun things like showing my other projects and stuff. Now for those mentions, because printers never rest, I have an oil catch can bracket mounted to the deck lid, a watertight ECU box to house the Speedwino and use OEM style connections, a custom light switch cover, and a pair of tough TPU 70D exhaust hangers that keep the exhaust level. So the seven featured prints cost just $224.14 and we dodged nearly $4,500 in parts and labor. That puts this buggy back on the road for the summer, plus it's a huge win for the 3D printing community and my wallet, which I like that. That's nice. It keeps these videos coming. So if you want any of these files, they're kind of custom, but I'll give them to you. Drop the number you want below, and I'll post it up on one of the repositories. If you haven't, tap subscribe so you don't miss the next project, as the next fun project is going to probably involve a ridiculous wall of speakers. I have a hundred of them in, ha in the house, and that's what we're doing. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the comments.